Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And some of you probably thought about starting your very own sports podcast. Well, let me help you out. I want to tell you a little bit about Anchor. Now, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's an easy way to make a podcast. And it's free. You don't have to worry about paying a bunch of money each month. There are creation tools to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so you don't have to worry about that. So it can be heard on apps like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So go to anchorfm.com and start your very own podcast today. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast, giving you the State of the Saints podcast post-game show. Final score of the Saints versus Lions, the New Orleans Saints 35, the Detroit Lions 29. Uh, The Saints get the victory. They win their second game of the season, puts them at two and two, and I think we all can just settle down just a tad bit, you know, wondering what's going on with the offense and, you know, what about Drew Brees and and the running attack. Uh, This game right here, it showed like just all aspects of the game. You know, it it showed us the the, the offense, you know, the defense played pretty well. And also with the the special teams, man, you know, they had that that big play, you know what I'm saying, down at the one yard line. So that was a plus. And then a pass rush even showed up today. So, the Saints seem like they cleaned a lot of things up. Uh, we're going to be talking about this game. Uh, we're going to be breaking it down. But uh, right now, we have Sean Payton. He's at the podium right now. So just want to give you all, uh, you know, just a, a look, a listen uh, to Sean Payton. Um, this is Sean Payton talking about the Saints' victory against the Detroit Lions. Sean, was it a sleepless night for you in light of everything that, that happened?
challenges that they had with, with some new players in the lineup. So overall, it's a good a good team win. Focus wasn't going to be uh, Michael Thomas. Uh, you know, I thought he did a really nice job of catching contested passes and just going up and being a big play receiver. And he was another guy that... Yeah, but uh, that was a Sean Payton press conference. I apologize, folks. I didn't realize that, um, you know, you all couldn't hear. But it was Sean Payton just talking about uh, the team uh, overall. I think the the team just did a really good job, you know, all things considered. This was a team that uh, had to weather the storm, man. They they get into Detroit on Saturday night. They mostly up the majority of the night. Uh, They had to, even though they got tested after midnight, they had to stay up for the results. I mean, this is this was a team that was tired, that was exhausted, and you got to play a game at twelve uh, Central uh, Standard Time. So, this is one of those games where you can just really say that this was a game that the Saints uh, really took. You know, what I'm saying they they really went out here, and you can tell this is a team that wants to get better. This is a team that understands some of the issues that have been plaguing them, and they really did their best to try to clean it up. I mean, all, outstanding job by this team, man. They knew what they're, you know, what they were lacking, and guys picked up the pace, man. Uh, Shouts out to, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but P.J. Williams and (laughs) Patrick Robinson, man. They they didn't play as bad as we all thought they would. Uh, Them rising to the occasion, you know what I'm saying, them stepping up. You know, those guys, those guys are no shutdown corners by any stretch of the imagination. But just to know that those guys have enough pride to go out there and try to get the job done, I mean, it just uh, speaks volume about them. Uh, the New Orleans Saints running game, uh, it really showed up and it really showed out, okay? The Saints uh, running game was outstanding today. And I'm pulling up the stats right now on my phone. Um, they had 42 carries in this game, okay? No, yeah, let me make sure I'm, I'm getting this correctly here. They had 42 carries in this game. I can't remember the last time I ever seen the Saints run the ball 42 times in a the game. They, had 42, they ran the ball 42 times for 164 yards. 3.9 yards a carry. And, you know, this team right here really showed that they wanted to uh, put emphasis on the running game. And I think it was very, very smart of Sean Payton to put emphasis on the run. I also like the way that the Saints came out being aggressive, trying to get the ball down the field. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders had his best game in the Saints uniform. He had six catches for 93 yards. And, uh, I mean, he was always – uh, where he needed to be, and you can see him break off the route sometimes when Drew Brees was under the rest, coming back to the ball. Just stuff like that, man, just shows you that uh, Drew Brees and Emmanuel Sanders are starting to be on the same page. Uh, also, I want to give a special shout out to Traquan Smith, man, who was clutch all game long. Um, I think we need to understand, and I think somebody needs to uh, go ahead and just flat out say it. But Traquan Smith is playing much better than he has ever played in the NFL right now. I think that now that Ted Ginn Jr. is gone, he's in his comfort zone on the outside. And as you can see, man, he was out there running some really good routes. That clutch catch, you know, that he caught on that la- on the last drive to keep the drive going, that was some Lance Moore, Willie Sneed type stuff right there. Like, seriously, man, that is like when the game is on the line and Drew Brees throw the ball to Lance Moore or something like that on third down. That's what that was, Traquan Smith. And – you know who that nation, I guess we didn't really think about this because the Saints were losing at the time. But I think by Michael Thomas going down, it really gave Drew Brees an opportunity and it made him put emphasis on getting his chemistry together with Traquan Smith and Emmanuel Sanders. Because I wonder if Michael Thomas would have still been playing, if he wouldn't have missed the game, how would the chemistry be if you know, Michael Thomas was in the lineup. It kind of forced the New Orleans Saints uh, for and Drew Brees and Emmanuel Sanders to get on the same page as far as the play calling and as far as them doing what they needed to do. I don't think you would have this type of emphasis if Michael Thomas would have still been in the lineup. I don't think we'll be seeing this version of Traquan Smith if Michael, Michael Thomas wasn't in the lineup. So in the process of all these growing pains they've been going through, that's one of the li- that's one of the silver linings in the dark clouds. The the fact that they were forced to be on the same page much earlier than they probably anticipated. I mean, you look at somebody like Jerry Cook who came to the New Orleans Saints. At the beginning of the season, it was rough, right? It was rough for him. And then 
as time went on around week six and seven, they were able to develop. But it's different when you have a wide receiver because the wide receiver's job is to catch the football and, and rely on, you know, and rely on, you know, the quarterback to get them the ball. So I think that that was a blessing in disguise. You know, not that I'm happy that Michael Thomas is hurt, but I don't think that they would be as strong or trying to put more emphasis on having chemistry as they are right now if Michael Thomas was in the lineup. Uh, but all in all, I mean, I think everybody played pretty well. Uh, I, I think before I start taking calls, I think this needs to be said right here, and I'm not going to stutter when I say it. The referees of the National Football League hate the New Orleans Saints. I'm going to say that again. The referees, the referees in the National Football League, they hate, they absolutely hate the New Orleans Saints. Those were some of the tickiest tag calls I've ever seen in my entire life. That was not pass interference on Marcus Williams. That was not pass interference on Alex Azzalone. The only play that was right was the false start. The referees literally gave the Detroit Lions seven freaking points. Seriously. I think they realized that the game was going to be out of hand and they needed to do something. Alex Azzalone did not foul that receiver at all. Okay, that illegal contact call they put on Azzalone was ticky tack as hell. Did look, there comes a time when 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 players have a reputation for being bush league, when they have a reputation for causing fouls, the referees look at things really, really close. And I feel like the way that they officiate Saints games are completely different from what the games I be watching. I watched a couple games on the NFL Red Zone as I was watching the Saints game. Man, some of the calls, I mean, nip and tuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, and they calling these, like, these dudes just completely violated. Marcus Williams, rather you like him in coverage or not, you have to admit, first off, the ball was uncatchable, okay? Marvin Jones, unless he was Wilt Chamberlain or George Marison, wasn't going to catch that pass. Was not, okay? That ball went clean over his head. Marcus Williams got to Marvin Jones the same time the ball did, and they called pass interference on the guy. Alex Azzalone did not put a hand on his receiver. He just had his back turned, but he did not touch this dude. He did not He did not obstruct this guy's view. He didn't stop this guy from being able to catch the ball down the field. They just called it, and they put the ball right on the two-yard line. And then they go call... Then they're gonna call all sides. Okay. That was all sides. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock, like knock that. But they gave the Detroit Lions seven points. And I must say that I am sick and I'm tired of these referees, man. People say, oh man, Saints fans, they want it. Are oh, y'all not watching these games? I never seen a team get put under the microscope by referees the way the Saints do. Seriously, I never seen nothing like that before in my entire life. It is clear that the New Orleans Saints and the referees don't get along. Yeah, I don't know if the NFL just got something out for this team. I don't know if the referees are told to, pl- to watch these guys close. I don't know what the hell is going on. But I tell you this, man, the referees, they, they, they need to be stopped. They need to stop because right now they're dictating the game. They're dictating the pace of these games, and they're causing people to lose these football games. Look, the fact of the matter is this. Rather, you change the way that you're officiating or get some damn good referees that know how to do it because they're controlling the pace of the game. And I don't know if that's their way to try to keep things competitive or if they look at a team having a lot of momentum, they throw a flag, you know what I'm saying, in order to shift the momentum to make the game more interesting because I am one of those people who believe in momentum. I feel like when a team is rolling, it's hard for them to stop. But if you start throwing flags, start getting into the psyche of those players, and the next thing you know, some of the things start to die down. These referees need to be stopped. I'm sick of this, man. Tim says, I never realized how much we needed ramp check. Yep. That leads me to my next point. And thank you very much, Tim, for the $5. Look, I want everybody to understand this. The Saints survived this game. They survived, okay? They were winning this game. They were winning. And they were, and they were winning uh, in decisive fashion. But they survived at the end when Ryan Ramchek went down. Anybody that don't understand the importance of an offensive lineman, anybody that don't understand how important an offensive line is, 
look no further than Ryan Ramchick. When I always rant and rave and talk about Ryan Ramchick and I say that he is the, the best player on the Saints team, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean it. OK, no, he's not the, at the sexiest position. He's not catching the football, throwing the ball downfield. But y'all see how important this guy is. When when the Saints had to go to the backup offensive line, God bless him. But them boys could not do nothing. OK, he couldn't do nothing. If you look at the Saints in the second half, when Ryan Ramchek went down, they ran most of their plays to the left on the side where you had Nick Easton and you had um, Teron Armstead. That's the side that they ran on. Okay, Cesar Ruiz, I think that he's going to be a good player. I think that he did a really good job in the first half, but he don't really understand fully about, you know what I'm saying, some of the offenses, you know what I'm saying, and some of the things that he have to do. And he lined up against Eric McCoy, and now you have another guy, another young guy lined up against Cesar Ruiz. Man, that's a recipe for disaster. But hopefully, hopefully Ryan Ramchek, you know, he'll be able to play on Monday night. Um, I'm hoping that he'll be able to get back. I'm looking forward, you know what I'm saying, to, to him, him getting back. Uh, I know he had concussion protocol, man. Hopefully it's not nothing that he can't miss. A, you know, he have to miss a game or anything like that. But uh, as y'all can see, man, like when Ryan Ramchek was in the game, the Saints were dominating in the running game. When they left, well, I mean, when he left, the running game went with him, you know. So it is what it is, man. But good victory by the New Orleans Saints. Uh, once again, they win by a score of 35-29. Uh, it was a really good game, you know what I'm saying? Really solid game, and uh, everybody contribute, man. It was this was a team victory, no doubt about that. Uh, how did we get all these injuries? Well, I mean, just you're just playing a game, you know. Bad things happen sometimes, you know. I don't think people understand like when when teams are like fully healthy towards the end of the season, they have most the majority of the starters in tech. That's that's a blessing, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, because guys. Don't play a full 16 game season. They just don't, you know. So the Saints are, are dealing with some injuries, and hopefully, because it's at the beginning of the year, we can have these guys towards the end and they can contribute to uh, you know, the Saints success. Uh right now I'm putting the the I'm putting the uh link into the uh comments right now to you know take some phone calls. But in the meantime, let me go ahead and answer some of these questions as well. Did uh Harris get hurt too? Yeah, I was that was what I was thinking. I was thinking I ain't seen her. Because they had Alvin Kamara back there returning punts and returning kickoffs. So I don't know. I guess he did get hurt. Malcolm Jenkins uh, could was getting most the whole game. Yeah, but he also did some really good things too. You know, I'm not going to sit up here and, you know, and, and keep completely knock him. You know what I'm saying? Hawkinson, I don't know if y'all know how good that guy is, but the guy is like 6'6, six, 6'7. Six, six, he going up against Malcolm Jenkins, who about 5'11, six feet. So he do have an advantage over him. You know what I'm saying? I think that we need to. Uh, understand that but when it came to the running game uh i think that uh malcolm jenkins did a really good job man so i mean a couple plays yeah he, he did look embarrassed on there you know what i'm saying that two-point conversion but i'm not gonna beat him i'm not gonna beat him up too bad because overall he did a really good job uh paul what's going on man how you doing how you doing man first uh first time caller long time listener i appreciate uh, hey so this week is it really concerning i mean it's the lions and i feel like we put way too much effort to get a win like that like it's the lions i really can't stress that enough like it's the lions right and it's it's like it's like we all watched the game we saw them go up and i understand the running game stop it just really felt like that game could have went one play left and we would be talking about how they collapsed i mean right. after all honestly i'm not really excited because this is teams we're supposed to beat like this is just like the raiders this was just like last week. Last week I already had as a loss before the season even started. But mm -hmm. the way it played out and the way it went down, I mean, something has to be said. Maybe Drew Brees showed off, but stick to do what the Cowboys do to a sense. Run the ball more to where you don't leave the defense on the field for long periods of time because the secondary, it, it it's just after all these years, when Lattimore is not in the game, they don't play good. Right. And well, okay, well, that is a question I have for you. How much do you think Lattimore is going to be worth this year when his contract comes up? Well, um, I don't think that he's going to get paid like a top three corner, if that's what you're asking me. I don't, I mean, the way that he's played, I mean, his play has been up and down. As much as I like him, his play has been up and down, and he honestly hasn't been playing up to his full potential. Right. And I think that he, he, he downplays some of the, you know what I'm saying, down, 
they he downplays some of the receivers that he go up against and he plays to their level. You know what I'm saying? Not realizing that, you know, he should up his level and play the same way he would if Julio or Mike Evans was lined up against him. Uh, so I do feel like he's going to get maybe like top five money or something like that, uh, you know, due to the importance of the position. And um, he does give you, you know what I'm saying, some type of production. But um, he, he's not going to be the highest paid cornerback. And, no. um, also, and also to comment on something that you said, you know, it, the, the fact is they were running the football. They just was losing yards. It's because Ryan Ramchek went out. You know what I'm saying? Like Ryan Ramchek is real, like, I don't, man, people don't know. Ryan Ramchek is the best offensive lineman that we have. He's better than Teron Armstead, as good as he is, how solid he is. He's better than Eric McCoy. He better, clearly better than Pete. And he is better than Cesar Ruiz. He is the best. You can argue and say that he is the top five best player on the Saints team. When he went out with a concussion, the, the running game went with him. You know what I'm saying? The majority of the plays, if you go back and watch that game, was ran towards his side. You know what I'm saying? So when he left, you bring in a, a young rookie. This guy don't really know what's going on, man. You know and I'm saying he out there getting whooped, which he should. You know what I'm saying? He, he a backup. He a backup for a reason. If he, he can play any better, he'll be a starter on somebody's team or on this team. Right. So I'm not concerned about this because I mean, they ran the ball. Like, they ran the ball. They controlled the time of possession. They they kept the defense off the field. They sustained long drives. But when Ryan Ramchek went down, that's when you started to see the defense, like, start to get back to what, you know what I'm saying, the way that they were because the Lions were getting three and outs on the Saints. So that was them running back on the field. So – if Ryan Ramchick, th- this is what I'm saying. If Ryan Ramchick would have stayed in this game, the Saints would have blew out the Detroit Lions. They wouldn't have stopped them, man. They couldn't. They they came out there in the second half with the adjustments with Ryan Ramchick, and they still ran the ball up and down the field. On so sure. that that's the, that's what I'm saying. Like he is that important to the team. So if he's off for an extended period of time, I mean, you got Chargers coming up next week, and then the bye week after that, mm-hmm. and then. And then what is going on with all these? Like somebody was saying earlier, these injuries. It's only week three, and every other day at this point, it's like like as I was watching, this person went down, this person went down, this person went down. I don't know what the hell going on with Michael Thomas. It, it, right. it honestly seems like he should just wait till after the bye week. Well, uh, look, he just had a high ankle sprain, man. That's something that you don't want to rush a player to get back. You know, right. you don't, especially a guy of his talent. You know, what I'm saying you don't want him to reaggravate and then you mess around and need surgery. So. Look, I'm, I'm fine by that. And like I said before, this is giving guys the opportunity, the guys that we don't normally see, for them to step up. This is very important because we already know what Michael Thomas is going to give us. But what happens when Michael Thomas get double covered and, and you have Traquan and Emmanuel Sanders getting those one-on-one matchups? What are they going to do? So the chemistry that they're building in the absence of Michael Thomas is going to be really important uh, down the stretch. But, uh, Paul, I got some more people on the line, man. I appreciate you. You take it easy, man. Thank you, Dizzy. All right. Yeah, man. Uh, that's, man, Ryan Ramchek is so important to the New Orleans Saints. I, I think people really need to truly understand it. Uh, Sanchez, what's going on, man? How you doing? TJ, who that? Who that? Yeah, who that? Who that? Big 500 Club. That's what I'm talking about, sitting there two and two. Yeah. A uh, couple quick points about the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like that the uh, defensive line woke up this game, mm-hmm. uh, created some pressure. I like right. I, I, I like the way I, I was scared towards the end of the game. I was right, right. But PJ Williams and um Ken Crowder, the secondary, they held the end of the bargain this mm-hmm. week. I really believe that um even through all the adversity, we knew that this was a game that we could not let go. Yeah, we could not be falling to one and three. Yeah, and I, I'm I, I'm not happy. I'm still not satisfied. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I, I, I'm I'm more happy for you know Deontay Harris and Emmanuel mm-hmm. Sanders and yep. um, you know for the for the guys who don't get to play and call for them. Drew Brees had no choice, no choice but to spread their ball and be a tad bit more aggressive because you mm-hmm. don't have your two uh, best safety uh, blankets and Jerry Cook and Michael Thomas. Yep. So you got to spread the ball, and I'm so happy. What you say we ran the ball what 46 times, 42 man, times, something like man, that? 42, 42 times. I mean, let me make sure I'm telling you, yeah, 42 times they ran a football today. So I, I I'm 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 satisfied with the win. Like you said earlier this week, we don't care how we win. Don't. We just want to win. But That's it. We do see 
the the key thing that we have been talking about on this podcast for I don't know how long. Can we just be consistent with those things? And yep. I and real one more quick point. I think we got some uh some insiders on in the chat because. I see, you know, the more and more we talk about these things, Sean Payton try to implement these things. So I think we might have an insider. Man, I mean, look, we, we've had uh, people, that, you know, get interviewed uh, on the State of the Saints podcast, man. You know, and I, you know, like they've been on the show and they they follow the podcast, man. So, you know, I, I've seen like on, on some, you know, some occasions where I would talk about something. And I, I would hear like one of the reporters actually ask the question. You know what I'm saying? And, and right. not to mention, like after like after we get off, we have conversations and stuff like that. And you know, I, I would ask them to if they, you know, if they could to ask them this question. And then, most likely they do sometimes. So, you know, they, they do uh they do look out for your boy, you know what I'm saying? So, Good love. Good love. <laughs> yeah, so and I do appreciate them, man. They they man, all those reporters down in New Orleans, man, uh John DeShazer. Uh, Ride uh, Walker, uh, man, all those uh, reporters that been on the show. I mean, they they do show love, man, and they uh they look out for me, man. But one more Sanchez, time, yeah, one more go time ahead, man. I, go. I mm-hmm. just wanted to give you a uh, big ups because I'm from Memphis. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I know outside of New Orleans, our fan base may not be the biggest. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to people keeping us in tune, like you are the goat, my boy. I did not I appreciate when that. When I man. was trying to find Saints coverage. You know, to keep me busy during the work days and all that, I could not find nothing until I found the State of the Saints podcast. I appreciate Big that, up, man. my boy. Man, Big I appreciate up. that, man. Thank you, man. And, uh, you know, always call back, man, anytime you want to, man. I appreciate it. Man, I just like the warm, welcome feeling, man. All Who right, that? man. Who that? Shouts out to Sanchez. Uh, we got Everett coming up. Everett, what's going on, man? Everett, can you hear me? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not trolling. I don't. I'm uh, as usual. I want. I want to sit here and tell you that. Uh, then I say you, and this is one of your podcasts is that you had. I think Friday or whatever. You, mm-hmm. you. I, I told you I said the same forty four. We're gonna put a forty four perms, and uh, but right. we ended up with thirty five. We were capable of putting up fifty. Yeah, I agree, and I agree with that. I'm telling you. That the Saints went down when they went down to um, fourteen to nothing. My page, everybody was screaming, "Take Drew Brees out, bench him." They were doing a lot of stuff, and I sit here and I tell people, I say, "You know what? You protect Drew Brees, and this is the results of running the football, and this is some of the things you have stated for. I think you've been beating down this bush for a thank for a very long time since I've been watching." Yeah, man. They have to run the football. It doesn't matter if you have Aaron Rodgers, if you have Dan Marino, you have to run the football. Drew Brees can throw the football. He did not forget how to throw a football. Now, he don't throw a ball down the field 80 yards, 60 yards like Patrick Mahomes, but he knows how to throw a football. We don't need him throwing 60 yards to win football games. We need him to throw semen routes that are completed balls and people who are wide open. It looked, it reminded me of when Drew Brees was spreading the ball back before we even had the Michael Thomases and we had all the weapons. He had no choice but to throw to Callaway. And these guys, I, I, look, I wish they would have tried to get Callaway the ball a little bit more. Callaway looks dangerous. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, that the Saints in October, now remember this, I brought a statistic when last time I spoke to you. In September, the Saints is one of the worst teams in football in September. Mm-hmm. But in October and November, the Saints are one of the most dangerous football teams in the football because for whatever reason, Sean Payton and them play well in, the, in October, and this has been the last three years, they have had that dominance. Now, we didn't play with Michael Thomas. We did not play with two starting cornerbacks. That mean you talked about. Remember I told you about Patrick Robinson? I said when he's healthy, the dude can play. There's nothing wrong with Patrick Robinson. When he left New Orleans, he learned how to play with San Diego. When he left New Orleans, he learned how to play with Philadelphia. You don't just forget football. So I want to tell you that I, 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 I just think that this team – we won this game against the Detroit Lions because, oh, it's the Lions. They were one and two, and they beat a good Arizona team, which Carolina beat today. 
It'll be Chicago. If it, DeAndre Swift and uh, drop that pass. If he ain't dropped that pass in the that end zone, they would have won. And Swift looked good today. Oh, what you think, TJ? Swift looked good. He looks he looked like a keeper. Yeah. And in, in the beginning of the game, he was he was slashing us. But yeah. something but uh, Dennis Allen, whatever he did to make adjustments. I like Alice uh, as a loney. Don't give me no that he made that pass interference. That was that was not a pass interference. I, I wanna, you know. These NFL referees are keeping the game, keeping these teams in the game against the New Orleans Saints. They are keeping them in the game, TJ. And they, it, yes, the Saints beat themselves sometimes. But if you can clearly see that the referees are being a little bit drastic when it comes down to playing us. And yeah. I'm going to leave with this. I'm going to leave with mm -hmm. this because this is your show. And I'm going to tell you like this. I love your consistency. Man, you are very it. young. Listen, you're very young. I'm 45 years old. You are what I used to be. And I'm <laughs> telling you, I know you see me. Oh, yeah. You're, my son my son is going to be in your stage. My son is in college right now at Bellhaven University. That's what okay. he's going to be. With, you know. And he's, I want to tell you what I love about you is your consistency. I and that, you tell it like it is. Yep, and you keep doing that. what you're doing. And look, listen, you be looking at this old man and he be yelling and screaming and he does he does what he does. You don't know what I put up with. You don't know what I <laughs> you, I you don't you, know man. you're gonna get old. Hey, I, I may I, not look like I'm 45, but let me tell you something. I'm every bit of 45. But I'm <laughs> telling you this. You keep on doing what you're doing. I'm gonna you keep on look, I'm gonna keep on being the way I am because I'm I, I wanna keep pressing your knowledge. That's just the way you know the bad is it. The bad is going to keep on coming. You know what I'm saying? I just right. want to say, don't. I'm a Saints fan. I'm a diehard. It's too. hard for me to just pull away from. I saw the 1987 Saints. When they put up 44 points in Minnesota Vikings, we started up 10 0. Bobby Abram. <laughs> Bobby. Oh, Bobby. We scored. 10 to nothing on the Vikings. We lost 40. Uh, Anthony Carter was killing us. The Philadelphia mm -hmm. Eagles. Remember the Philadelphia Eagles. Never forget Drew, I mean, uh, uh, Bobby losing his teeth. He lost yeah. a tooth in his mouth. So I'm an old school Saints fan. But I'm going to tell you, you a bad ass. Uh, yeah. Mister, I don't know, you're monetized. But go ahead on, bro. I'm out of here, brother. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Call back any time, brother. All right. Man, shouts out to Everett, man. Uh, LMAO says, well, TJ, I'm glad we won. Drew Brees played well today. The truth hurts, man. What's going on, man? Thank you for the $5 donation. Thank you so much. Uh, We're going to go ahead and move on, man. I got the last saint. Man, what's going on, man? What's good, man? How you doing? I'm good. Uh, Got that victory today. How you feeling? Uh, just glad we had the W. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was scary at the end, man. It was there there was in survival mode at the end, but we got the victory. Yeah, um, good game by the office, man. This would have been a, a choke job if we had not ran the ball at all. I knew that's how we was gonna get busy because, uh, like I've heard other uh, Saints commentators and analysts say, uh, a lot of team this 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 Detroit Lions team prepared for only the um the, the throwing game, right. They weren't expecting us to be so ball dominant with the run game. Right. Uh, a lot of things that made me mad about the game is um, putting Taysom Hill in shotgun. Uh, that's that's not 2018 or 2017 anymore. They know what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't like all that trickery with Alvin Kamara. Like that shouldn't have been done either. You should have just ran north north south with Latavius Murray. Right. Uh, Dennis, Dennis Allen is still problematic. Mm -hmm. With the play call on that defense, whether you want to say it's um, just the players, because that's not a lie. We do have some. We do have a lot of trash um, secondary. Marcus Williams is pretty soft too. He he may have caught a pick, but his his coverage is horrible, mm -hmm. and he got dragged by um, the corpse of Adrian Peterson. We're gonna <laughs> call it the fade of fade. He got dragged. Mm -hmm. um, Malcolm Jenkins, he, he's an enforcer, but he was still getting burnt on different routes too. Yeah. Uh, that's that's pretty much what I've seen about the game overall. I think it was a good W, especially what happened because I because like I was man, I'm trying to go to sleep 
and I'm looking at the uh, NFL news, and it said that the, uh, our fullback had COVID, and Alvin Kamara was sitting right next to him. Right. So I was like, mm-hmm. please, guy, reschedule this game so we don't get our heads blown off. By, <laughs> by the Rockets, man. I was like, please, guy, reschedule this game like they're doing with the uh, – because the I, don't, I don't want that smoke at all. <laughs> I, mean, I, look, uh, I mean, I was feeling the same way when I seen his name come up. I was like, oh, man, maybe we need to cancel this game. Uh, but, look, the way that the Saints played today, uh, the, the limitations that they had, and for them to get the victory, I'm just okay with that. I mean, and they were very handicapped, at, at, yeah. you know, and some of the coverages that they can actually play. They had to play a lot of – they had to play a lot of cover two, man. They had to play a lot of cover two. They had to play a lot of zone. They, you know what I'm saying? You, you rarely see any man out there. The only time no. you really seen man was like on short yard situation, third and two. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. You didn't see that. You seen like a lot of like over the top stuff, which I'm going to be honest. Maybe they need to go in that direction more often because it seems to me that players were more around the ball than they normally were. You know what I'm saying? Normally it was like yeah. guys getting beat 10 yards or something like that, but they always had like two guys in the vicinity somewhere. So maybe they need to, they need to uh, add that on to it because, you know, I mean, you had to help. You had to have help with for PJ Williams, man. You had to yeah. help him, and um, in some ways, you had to help Patrick Robinson too, who did a really good job. You know, what I'm saying guarding Kenny Galladay for the most part. But um, look, I'm just glad they ran the football. Okay, I, look, I've been I've been putting emphasis on running the football. For I don't know how. We long. all have. I'm, I'm, I'm just glad. <laughs> I'm just glad they actually ran the football. Look, everything else. Right, <laughs> everything else is irrelevant. You can clean it up because you won, <laughs> but the fact that they ran the ball 42 times. I'm happy about it, my brother. I'm happy. But this is this is what scares me about that, though. You know, mm-hmm. we we got a lot of injuries. So yeah. my fear is that when Michael Thomas comes back, Sean Payton is going to go back to that pass happy offense. Like that's oh. not, that's not what's going to work, man. That's not going to happen. Because like once you once Michael, okay, Michael. In my opinion, in my opinion, Michael Thomas is what keeps the offense rolling. Right. That five and no stretch was because of Michael Thomas and, um, in my opinion, Sean Payton not having faith in Teddy Bridgewater to zip the ball down the field. So that's why they ran the ball consistently. Right. Like you were saying about that cover two scheme with the defense, they were able, Dennis Allen was able to play comfortably like that because the the defense didn't have all that pressure. Pressure. They was able to make that third and outs, and by running the ball, you keep the defense fresh. I mean, everybody knows that. Yes. Yes. Everybody knows that. But my fear is that this um, – you're not going to get Traycon Smith going like he was going uh, because Michael Thomas is going to get – he's going to be dominant. He's going to get all the passes. And Sean Payton is probably going to is probably going to force those slant routes or those out routes or those post routes. Yeah. And you just, you just hope and pray that we just keep running the ball because, I mean, Ryan Ratchett, he's going to be out for, for just a couple of days. He's going he gonna to heal. Hopefully, and Latavius, yeah, hopefully. But we're gonna we're gonna say that he's gonna be uh, healthy though. Yeah. But Latavius Murray, you know the guy, the guy is the guy is running hard, man. He's getting five yards, ten yards. If he catches yeah. the ball for like a flat a out route or a flat route, he's gonna yeah. be he's gonna get additional yards because they can't stop him. Mm-hmm. And Alvin yep. Kamara, that dude's lazy, man. Like he's not. <laughs> <laughs> that contract got him dipping out, man. He could get like five extra yards, and he's just going out of bounds. Um, I mean, but look, I, I feel like that. But I, I have to say this though. I will. I will say this. Um, yeah. That last play uh, to seal the deal on a halfback toss. Why did you run out of bounds? Like you had the first down. It was pretty easy. Like the last play before they actually took knees. They, you know, what I'm saying all he had to do was just stay in bounds. He had the first down. All he had to do was just slide. But yeah. but that's just him, man. I mean, that's, I mean, he he's not he's not gonna fight for extra yards if he don't have to. He's trying to save himself, you know. Like even like when he caught the ball, you know, he had like four <laughs> defenders on him at one time. He just fell down to the ground. I mean, sometimes you gotta take, sometimes you got or sometimes you gotta take that L, man. I mean, I guess that that's not his game being you know Marion Barber, uh, Earl Thomas back in the I mean Earl Thomas Earl Campbell back in the day in the seventies or something. I guess he feel like he he's important to his team, man. He got to stay healthy. So, no hey man, running, running backs are like considered expendable, bro. Yeah, and he's not your average, average running back. So I'm I'm I can understand that he don't want to die. Yeah, because like Latavius Murray is it's like three. I think he's like twice as big as him or three times. Yeah. So. Right. 
I, I like the way he does. I like I, I like the way he does it because I think he has a pulse on it. Like if if he just didn't like if the game was like on the line and he did it, I would question it. But it's like the team was winning. Okay, you know what I'm saying? He caught the ball, he got the first down. Fine, you know what I'm saying? But if I've seen times where the team is actually losing, he need to turn it up and try to fight for extra yards, he does. So I'm 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 not gonna knock him for for that. You know, I think he picks his battles pretty well. But I didn't like the fact that he went out of bounds, uh, you know, after he got that first down. He should have kept the clock running, you know. Yeah. And it would have made the game be over quicker. Something like that, you know what I'm saying, it might cost you, you know what I'm saying, opportunity. You might have to end up putting back to a team with a few seconds left versus they were coming, man. the clock out. Yeah, so. Yeah man, I, coming. yeah, man, but I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your commentary. Call back any time. No problem, man. Take it easy. All right, All right take it easy. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I didn't like that. I, I didn't like. I, I wish he would have stayed in bounds. But I mean, all, overall, I don't think we can really, uh, you know, critique or criticize anything Alvin Kamara doing right now. Uh, I mean, this dude is like another level type good right now. Like he he is clearly the front runner for offensive player of the year right now. Uh, thank you very much for the five dollars, Tim. He says, TJ, did you see even Emmanuel Sanders? Say that he never seen a team flag like this uh, from the refs. Yeah, I seen it. I seen it. And um, he right. I, I mean, at this time, man, it's almost like it's laughable how they how they treat the Saints. Jerry, what's going on, man? What's going on, TJ? Hey, what's going on, man? We got that dub, man. What you think about it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We did, man. But I, I, I will be honest with you, TJ. Because mm-hmm. uh, uh, first of all, from last night when I heard about the, uh, Michael Burton being um, being tested for, uh, for 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 the COVID nineteen, right? I was almost I was we were nearly this close not to play today, almost. Right. Yeah. When, when I woke up earlier this morning, and they say it that the that the uh, the uh, the test was pot was uh negative. Mm-hmm. We were good. We, we were good to go. But to be honest, right. Richard, and but 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 so that's good news. That's that's part one. Number two, I was glad we came into this game because at first I thought we were down fourteen to nothing. I said, "Oh Lord, no! Don't tell me we're gonna go to old one and three. Don't tell me <laughs> that." Right. But when but when, but but when the Saints start storming back. Mm-hmm. Coming back and scored twenty eight points going into halftime. I, I I was like I was shocked. I right. was real shocked, man. But that mm. second half, that real that really almost had me nervous. Right. Especially especially with these penalties, these dumb penalties. And you, Lord knows we hate the referees, man. They just hot garbage. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, they 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 but, ticket tag, and they, it seemed like they got something out on the Saints. I I don't know what it is. I really don't. Yes, uh, but uh, but also uh, but I heard you said that we ran the ball almost over forty times today. Forty two times, man. Forty two times. See, not 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 just like you said right there. We've been preaching about this even during before the season started. We have to run the football. Yes, man. You yes. said and you and you and you said it clearly, TJ. We ran the football. That's why we ran 42 times today. Yep. And that's yes. why we was able to control the time of possession. That's the reason why the defense, you know, was playing like like fresh. Because you know, you weren't throwing the ball all over the place, uh causing three and outs, being behind the eight ball on second exactly. and third down. So yeah, that's this was the recipe. And it, and honestly, this should always be the recipe for the New Orleans Saints because it also helps, like, the the way that Drew Brees threw the ball down the field today, mm-hmm. the, the fact, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't the fact that he was completing these passes. It was the fact that teams couldn't stack seven and eight in a box no more. They couldn't because nah. if you stack seven and eight in a box, now Drew Brees is throwing over your head, you got to accommodate for it. So that was the reason why all the lanes were wide open. You know, and then in the second half, you seen, like, a drop-off in it because – uh, Matt Patricia made the adjustments after half times to load the box to stop the run. Be- yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, he was willing to, to risk the pass in order to stop the run. So that's why you've seen a bu- bunches in, in a defense, seven and eight in the box. But the Saints had a good game plan. And I would wish that they would actually apply this game plan 
every single week somehow. The, the Saints at right now, to me, are a better mm-hmm. running team than they are a passing team. Because the running game for the last couple of weeks, ever since like the fr- this the running game for the New Orleans Saints has been like one of the best, one of the best things about this team. Like mm-hmm. in, uh, out of uh, in the four weeks, the running game has been the best. They just haven't been utilizing it. But um, right. But Jerry, man, thank you so much. I appreciate it, my brother. You already know, man. Call back anytime, OG. I, I, I appreciate you more, TJ. And you just keep on doing what you're doing, man. Yeah, you know, thank guys you, man. got you, man. man. You, you, all, you always bring something to the table to the podcast, and that's what I love about you, man. Because before you know, from from the old, from the OG, the original genius to to you, mm-hmm. and when you when you when you bring something New Orleans Saints related, I know you're going to give it your hundred percent. Got to I, man. That's why that's why we love about you. That's why you are at one hundred percent the host. Yes, sir. Of the State of the Saints podcast. And that's yes, what sir. I love about you, bro. Man, th- thank you so much, man. I appreciate those kind words, Jerry. Call back anytime, man. Anytime, man. You take care. Just, just enjoy this win. All right. Will do, man. Will do. Hey, man, I'm going to go to uh, Brian, man. Brian, Brian, what's going on, man? How are you? Hey, how you doing, man? Brian, like Brian is always in the comments, always with the great questions, always dropping them bombs, man. Brian, what you think about this game, man? What you think about the Saints getting that victory today? At first, I thought I'm like, oh man, here we go again. They were down. <laughs> I'm like, TV. I'm like, he's probably throwing his hat to TV. <laughs> and, and then when they started playing better, I said, oh man, it's just getting better. Yeah, yeah, man, I was happy about that. I was, I was excited. But what do you think about Drew Brees this game, man? I mean, throwing the ball down the field. You know, man, you've been in the comments, you've been in the chat. You know, people have been very critical of that, man. What you thought about Drew Brees today? How do you think he played? I think he played a lot better than he's been playing for the past couple of weeks. Mm. Yeah, he de- yeah, yeah, no doubt about that, man. I mean, I think he played really, really well. I mean, he had two touchdowns over two hundred yards, and seemed like he wasn't afraid to throw the ball down the field. So, do do you think that the Saints would be able to, you know, be able to take this game and maybe go into the next game and, and build on this momentum? What you think about that? It's going to be a tough one for them because uh, uh, it's going to be real tough. Yeah. They're well, I, I, the Chargers. It's going to be – Chargers mm-hmm. are, you know, I'm not saying they're a good team, but they're like a good matchup. It's going to yeah. be like a good battle. Yeah, man, I, I think that it is. I mean, I think they lost today against the Buccaneers, if I'm not mistaken, but they yeah. were up in that game. So, um, they, they played them tough, man, and they were – you know, it, it got a little ugly towards the end, but they, they did a really good job. But, uh, Brian, man, thank you so much, bro. Thank you so tomorrow's much. Gonna be, tomorrow's tomorrow, going to be funny. Yeah, tomorrow's man. Tomorrow's going to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, watching the stinkies lose. The stinkies <laughs> yeah, man. I, hey, I hope, man. I hope so, man. But Brian, thank you so much, man. Thank who's you for all your comments. Your and, mind me asking. What'd you say? Who's on your t-shirt? Oh, that's my son, man. That's Paxton. That's Paxton oh, okay. on my t-shirt. It's an animated version of him, man. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's my that's my son, man. But yeah, uh, I Brian, I was watching. I'm like, ah, oh, this thing's over. And all of a sudden, he came back. I'm like, can't believe it. <laughs> I think a lot of people felt that way, man. When they went up, when they uh, went down fourteen or nothing, everybody kind of, kind of rolled their eyes. They're you know, like, man, you know, well, I can't let's, believe we beat Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not surprised by that at all. I think the Dallas Cowboys, to me, I don't think they want to pay Dak, and I would not be surprised if they're trying to tank for uh, Trevor Lawrence. So one guy on the on the, on the uh, sports, <laughs> sports channel, he said that he had to, uh, he had Tampa Bay. 13-3 versus uh, Baltimore Ravens, 16-0. I'm like, mm. you're crazy. Yeah, yeah, and you see how that went, huh? I mean, yep. Baltimore got blew out last week. Yeah, but, Brian, thank you so much, so, man. Uh, where's your, Call where's back your brother? anytime. Where's your huh? brother? You have your brother come on here. Yeah, man, my brother, uh, I don't know where he is. I don't know. He should be in the chat pretty soon. I'm pretty sure he's going to call in. Well, EJ, if you look. here to talk to you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, he's supposed to. Yeah, EJ, man, if you're in the chat, man, you can always uh just call in, and I'll give you the link. Brian, uh, appreciate it, man. Yep. Later, yeah. All right. Now we're going to move on, man, to uh, Optimus Grind, man. Optimus, what's going on, man? What's happening, TJ, man? Who that? Yeah, who that, man? What's, what's going on with you, man? What you got for me? Man, I, I just – it's it's amazing how well a team can play when you just get down to the fundamentals. Run the football, be smart with it. Um, and it's just, you know, it, like you said, it's a real good formula, and I've been saying, like, as long as you can protect Drew and you're running the ball – 
I feel like we have, you know, a, like a top top three team. Right. Like I'm not saying we number one, but I mean we we definitely definitely top three when we're clicking on all cylinders, just by the amount of all the talent that we have. Right. And the fact that we was able to pull this win off without that talent says a lot. Even right. though the Detroit Lions aren't really, you know, the creme de la creme or anything like that, but it's still a good win against a yeah. conference opponent. Yeah. Look. The, like you, you just hit the nail on the head with your last statement. It was a conference opponent, and it was very important for the Saints to win this football game. And look, I, I take it any way I can because I, I, I don't look. I don't buy into that whole man. This team ain't good. That team ain't good. Look, you beat the team that's in front of you. Okay, that's that's all that matters. I don't care about who they played against because I'm pretty sure all of the people had the Dallas Cowboys beating the Cleveland Browns. I'm pretty sure they did, but the Cleveland Browns spanked around the Dallas Cowboys. So you can't just go about what people actually say and what it looks like on paper. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm just happy they got the victory, man. And I'm, I'm glad that I've seen some good things and, uh, so what, you know, hopefully they can build off this momentum. So let me ask you this. Do you think that Sean Payton will look at the film and see how successful we are against the run and actually – like game plan to make more games to be where it's bad. Cause I felt like the, the biggest thing with this game, we were balanced. The defense played better without key starters, which was right. an interesting thing for me, but um, it just goes to show you like, you know, scheme over team, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's, it's, it's just amazing um, that, you know, one, no one player can, you know, make the team, you know, that much better. Right. So it's like, I feel like, this should definitely be a formula that we have going forward. And I would really be surprised if we don't continue doing this. Like yeah. we don't need Drew. We, like I heard the announcer say something about uh, the competition between Breeze and Tom Brady. And it's like, you know, we don't need to hit it. We don't really care about that. Yeah, the Saints no, fans. We, no. He didn't broke the, he broke them records. We get, we glad he did it. Right. We, we need to win ball games because them records don't mean shit if you don't get no Super Bowl. Yeah. Yep. Good point. I can I can care less. I don't care about any of that stuff. The only thing that I care about is them boys getting that dub. I, I don't care about no 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 records or nothing like that. I don't care. That's that's for the media to write about. I care about them winning a football game. That's what matters to me, Optimus. Yeah, but how I, you think the how you think that tackle played? That's the only last question I got. I think he came in and did decent, but we, we can't run behind him. Oh no, man. I mean, look. I think that he would have played much better with some reps in practice, but, uh, you know, just thrown, getting thrown into the game is kind of tough for him, especially being a young guy. So, no, nah, I didn't expect for him to go out there and ball out, man. I mean, he did the best he could for, you know, the the situation he was in. I mean, he's not he's not Ryan Ramchick, you know what I'm saying? So, he ain't, he ain't going to block like him. So, we, uh, Ramchick was definitely missed. He was, he was definitely missed uh, in this game. Uh, Trey Quan, shout out to Trey Quan. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. D, man, the best game oh, one, I've seen him play. I got one last question. So, uh, uh, did you, did you, did, are you winning in fantasy football now since you started, Matthew? Yeah, man. I mean, he still put up some good points. He still, <laughs> he still put up, he still put up about, about 25 points. So, yes, yes, I am happy. I am, I'm very sad for I started Matthew Stabber, man. So, I mean, he still gave me some points. So, I'm not mad at that at all. <laughs> but Optimus, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. For sure. All right, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to Optimus, man. Good dude right there. Uh, I think my big brother EJ is trying to he trying to get in here. I'm trying to see if I can send him the link really quick, folks. Uh trying to get my brother on the on the on the line. I'm gonna go ahead and take some more phone calls. But man, I, I appreciate everybody, you know what I'm saying, for being a part, you know, of the podcast. Everybody's calling in. We go go to Iceman. Iceman, what's going on, man? Yo, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, what's going on, man? Y'all make sure that y'all check out Iceman T video he just posted not too long ago, man. But uh Iceman, what you thought about the game? Oh yeah, man. I thought it, I thought it was uh I thought it was a very interesting game, man. I was enjoying watching it. I like the right. uh I like the uh theatrics, the back and forth. Um I thought the team, you know, I thought the team it, it, it was a good moral victory, uh when, you know, just to boost the uh the, you know, morale and stuff like that, you okay. know, with all that was going on, the losing and, yeah. and, you know, you know, the whispers about is, is, you know, was the locker room, you know, had some type of stuff going on in it or whatever, but I thought it was a good win. I was happy to see, uh, you know, Drew, you know, attempt to, to, to put the ball downfield and, and, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, he, he was doing this thing. Um, now that's the good part. 
Um, the bad part is Marcus Williams, man. No. Uh, I know that this guy is a fan favorite. I know that he gets interceptions. I know I, I ride on Marcus Williams every chance I get. Right. Uh, you know, and you know, I, I have people get on me, tell me, you know, he's a ball hawk. I get that. Right. But I'm tired of seeing this dude getting blown up at the goal line, man. I'm tired <laughs> of seeing this dude getting blown up, dragged on tackles, and all of that. You right. know what I'm saying? Like we don't need that energy. You know what I'm saying? We don't need we we need, you know, I was watching these last couple of games. Mm -hmm. Did you see what Jonathan Abrams was doing? Did you yeah. see how he was like a cannon? Like he was shot out of a cannon. Right. Why can't Marcus Williams do that? That's my only question. Because you know not what I'm saying? Because he's not wired that way, Ice Man. You know, like some some guys are just finesse guys at their position. Then you got guys who are headhunters, you know, that play the play the game with reckless abandons and Marcus Williams is more of a finesse safety, you know. He'll he'll catch the ball if it comes in the vicinity, turn over the ball. But uh, he's not one of those guys that just like to tackle, you know. That just that's just not his his strong suit. I mean, I just think that I already said it, you know. I I, I know he's not coming back to the team next year. He's not, you know. It's pretty obvious, you know. Who you got to pay, uh, you know. What I'm saying the, the same salary cap and all. He's not coming back. So his best his best bet is to put the best product he possibly can on the field to put himself in a position to make right. some more money for the New York Jets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm just, right. I'm just right. being real. Because that's the most likely we're going to end up last, with the Jets. <laughs> I do have one last question. I'm going to get on out the way. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was interesting. I, I, I don't know if it was the last caller or the caller before, but mm -hmm. uh, they were hinting at, do you think Sean Payton would stay consistent with the balance of the offense? Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really interesting because his track record – like, if we're looking at his track record, we don't have anything to go off to have faith that he would continue this. You know what I'm saying? Right. He seems to, you know, run like how he did in the, in 2017. Ran the ball down the Bills' throat, and then he was throwing the ball all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to ask you. Do you think that he would stick to this uh, after seeing how much success he had? Or do you think when he gets all of his pieces back on the chessboard, he'd start throwing the ball all over the place. Well, I, and I'm going to leave on that note. Well, Ice, man, I appreciate it, man. I'll answer your question, man. But thank you very much for the call. But, um, yeah, seriously, man, I hope so. I mean, this 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 blueprint right here is, is, is showing me that this is what you need to do. Like, you need to run the football. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been watching a lot of Saints football when Sean Payton has been the coach. I don't think I ever missed a game, to be honest with you. I don't think I've ever seen the Saints run the ball 42 times in a game. I, I I don't I maybe you saw it, but I didn't. I never seen Sean Payton run the ball 42 times, but I'm happy he did. And you gotta be a fool not to uh follow this blueprint right now. It, it's not like you just played the Detroit Lions and you was gashing them. Like you was gashing the Packers last week. You know, like you you was really getting success against the, the Raiders on um, the week before that. So I don't understand like why they just don't commit to the run. You got to be patient, man, and continuously run the football. And I was glad, you know, when when Alvin Kamara would get stopped on, you know, and he'll lose a yard or Latavius Murray will lose a yard, he still was trying to run the ball. And that's what I got an appreciation for. I got an appreciation uh, for the fact that he decided to uh, to run a football. And that's all that mattered to me. Uh, hey, what's going on, man? How you doing, Dan? I'm doing all right, my man. It's Rob, bro. Let you know I'm working from home on COVID on these COVID times. I got to make this a little quick, you know. Right. Um, those flags against Anzalone was bogus, bro. Yeah, I, man. I, I, you know, I see them when I see them referees, bro. It's gonna be me and them, bro, with them bogus calls. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, Ramshack, you know, he's that dude on that line, bro. I All see right. why the Saints draft the lineman just about every draft pick, bro, because we yeah. can't see him to keep him healthy. But yeah. that dude, he's the truth, man. He literally is the truth. Because when he went down, our run game went down, you know. Yeah. So yeah. And I do hope, Sean, you know, he continues with the balanced offense, bro, because the run game keeps it honest, keep the defense fresh in the whole mm -hmm. nine yards. I used to take up for P.J. Williams and Marcus Williams. I'm not doing that no more. Yeah, I literally okay. take up for them, bro, because um, I understand he's an athlete the whole nine yards, but that P.I. he got, that was an uncatchable ball. I don't know what yeah. he was thinking. Yeah, that you was, yeah, that was, that was some, like, every pass interference call that happened on the Saints of the game was questionable as hell. Like, 
That, that's just the truth. Like, yeah, ticket pack at its best. Like, seriously. Yeah, and I do hope the, the distribution of the ball improves because you see we got um, Sanders and Smith. They 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 played a real good game today. Yeah, and I did. hope that continues once uh, Thomas gets back. And Callaway, I watched him at Tennessee a few games, you know, watching the SEC and stuff. But um, I think he's a truth as well. He just needs right. to be used, just like the rest of them. So I'm going to go ahead on and get back to work. So I took a break just to get on this call. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> uh, appreciate that. Hey, I appreciate yeah, that, though, like, man. And just like the other caller said, bro, you know, I'm a lot older, too. Don't let the look fool you. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I appreciate what you do, too, because I, too, I'm, I'm in Texas. I'm in cowboy country. And I talk oh, about man. them clowns every chance I get. So when we lose, oh, bro, they was on me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it's all good, all fun. But, um. You what know, part of Texas I'm, you in? What part, what part of Texas you in, man? I'm right outside Austin. Okay, okay. Man, I stayed yes. in Dallas for about five yeah. years, man. So I, I know huh? what you're talking about. I stayed in Dallas for like five years, man. So I know what you're talking about, man. Yeah, I, I know. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, but I was looking for a, a podcast, too, and I ran across yours. And, and I've been, I think it's like my second time calling you or something like that. And I've been, I'm impressed, bro. I like what you're doing, bro. I really do. Man, I pre- Trying to sound like that, me and my friends, but when we, I be going off, you be going off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm passionate about the team, man. So I, I'm definitely going to give everybody my all every time I get behind this mic. But I appreciate yeah, it, man. Right. You get back to work, right. man. Go ahead and yeah, make that thriller, man. Make that thriller, man. So, so, so let me go. <laughs> all right. All right. Take it easy. <laughs> that dude, man. What's good? Hey, man, appreciate the call. Uh, who that Davis? Uh, what's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, that Davis, man. What's going on? Can you hear me? What's going on, TJ, my dude? Hey, bro. Hey, man, nothing What's much, man. So we thought about the game. Yeah, bro. You can hear me, right? I can hear you. I can hear you. TJ? Can, can you hear me? All right. Uh, so basically, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. Uh, man, we having a little technical difference. Hey, who that? Uh, I think something wrong with your connection. Just hang up and uh, cl- and, and and click the link again, my brother. Don't let uh, you just hang up and uh, click click the link again, man, because I'm having a little issues hearing you. Uh, Mo, what's going on, man? What up, PJ? I mean, EJ. Hey, what's going on, man? I, I see you riding, man. You're you're riding too. You know what I'm saying? What you think about that Saints victory? I'm I'm uh, happy, but I'm a little disappointed at the same time. Mm-hmm. I think you can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear. You. I can hear. You. I think uh, I think we're a playoff team, but I think we're gonna have three battles that we always have to battle every single playoff. I think we're gonna have the battle within ourselves because I right. don't think Sean Payton gonna stick with the run. I think we're gonna have to battle with the refs to play a damn their perfect <laughs> game, and I think we're gonna have. To Got to have a battle with the football guards as far as health go because it ain't looking right, it ain't looking too good right now as far as health go and I hope later on down the line we can all just you know be healthy within these playoff games. Right, uh, I, I hope so too, man. You know I, these these refs getting a little bit out of control for me. Um, I still think there's some things the Saints just got to clean up, man. You know uh, defensively, I feel like they need to be able to get stops on third down where they matter most. And uh, I just think they need a little bit more consistency when it comes to, uh, you know what I'm saying, just tackling and stuff like that. I think C.J. Garner-Johnson, I think he had his best game this season. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I've seen some very – he had some crucial stops. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He was uh, guarding those sticks. Uh, it was one play in particular, man. I think the Detroit ran an end around. And if he didn't tackle that dude down to the ground, that dude would have hit his head on the goalpost. So C.J. Garner-Johnson had his best game in the Saints uniform, clearly. Uh, Patrick Robinson had one of his best games. Uh, and I just think that the running game, uh, they need to put more emphasis on that right now. I, I think I really think so, man. I think the running game is going to get the Saints where they need to be because the way that this defense is structured, you can't have them on the field, you know what I'm saying, on several different uh on several different snaps. You gotta you gotta eliminate some of the drives that the defense is on the field. Like seriously. If you run yeah. a football, control the time of possession. You don't have to worry about your defense going out there getting tired. They're not good enough to go out here and get tired, bro. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got the extra gift. So 
So we're the same thing that they run the ball 42 times. That's the key to victory uh, going forward, and it should be the key going forward. Yeah, I'm the same caller that called, and you had uh, re-mentioned what I had said about I think Sean Payton need to take the offense and have it like the 49ers when they had right. the, uh, the three running back monster uh, game they had, and they also mm-hmm. was using plays with their playmaker, Debo Samuels and stuff. I think I think we could do that with our three running backs if we put uh, Washington a little bit more, but we don't really just need Washington, but we could still put the ball in Taysom hands as far as, you know, catching it or doing some type of – other play because I don't think Taysom need to be doing running, running uh, play options anymore because I think his team just caught up, caught on to that. All he'll just make a bad decision. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think they need to put more emphasis on running the football, and I'm not mad at the whole San Francisco uh, 49er blueprint that you're talking about because all, the, all we could just do the Teddy Bridgewater blueprint. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But just do it with Drew Brees, and he'll just yep. make good decisions. Right. It was kind of like that today, if you if you want to be honest, like. That's how they. That's how they won that game in Chicago. You know, by running the football and just uh, allowing Teddy Bridgewater to make the right reads. You know, when he was in those third and long situations, so they definitely did that. Yeah, because uh, if I'd have, if I'd have told you before the game, Drew Brees will have under three hundred, three under three hundred yardage, and we still go st- score thirty five. You probably wouldn't believe me, but we can still win the game without having these bombs that people want from Brees. Right. That for the last three years, even if even when he was throwing bombs. It still was coming up short. Right. He never throw it in stride with people a lot. Right. Yeah, man. I mean, that's, that's a good point. Maul, well, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. You know, you call back anytime, man. Be careful on that road, my brother. All right, thanks. All right, take it easy. Hey, man. I'm a. Uh, I'm going now to my big brother, EJ. EJ Jones. Uh, e. Uh, Saints get that victory, thirty-five to twenty-nine. Uh, I think you just got our We've been doing for a very long time. You know what I'm saying? I hear my nephew and my uh, my sister in law in the background. But uh, <laughs> uh, what do you think about what do you think about this victory, man? They did something that that we wanted them to do for a while. And that's running. What do you think about the same victory here? I mean, we'll see what kind of growth they have if they go the next week when they play the Chargers and do the same thing. Because the Chargers got a real good defense. I mean, they ran the ball. Seemed like they stuck with it. Um, had me kind of nervous when it was down 14 nothing. I, I turned from the game. The Lions had scored. And I turned. I, I think I turned to the Carolina uh, Cardinals Arizona. game. Yeah, and then they, the Lions was going in for another touchdown. I'm like, man, what's going on? <laughs> so it seemed like they got their legs under themselves like in their second quarter. So I think going forward, believe it or not, I think this might be the best game the defense played all season other than that Tampa Bay game or whatever. And we did it with, what, third and fourth spring cornerbacks or whatever. I think Patrick Robinson had a real good game. He probably had the best game he had since being back with the Saints. I can't crawl him. I mean, we ain't heard his name, so he did pretty good. And, um, yeah, the defense played uh, – I think they played pretty good. thing about it is, I mean, we got to be consistent. I mean, it's time. it's, time, it's October now. It's time to start springing together some win. We got the charges, then we got that bye, much needed bye. Hopefully, we get Michael Tom. Most likely, they're gonna probably keep him out another week, and probably come back after that bye, or whatever, so to make sure he's hundred percent. I mean, I ain't even sweating that. The most most concerning thing to me is Ryan Ramchick. Yeah. I mean, I think he listed as a concussion, so most yeah. likely he won't play next week either. So we have to see if we can get back Lattimore and Pete. And all of those other guys or whatever. But as long as he's not hurt long term, I think we'll be all right. Uh, we're still in the middle of the NFC South, I mean, even though Tampa Bay is in first place now. But I wouldn't worry about that too much. I worry about getting healthy, rallying on defense, and seeing if we can run the ball more on a weekly basis. Like I said, if we can run for 150 yards every game, I think we'll win 80, 90 percent of our games. So if we could do that every week, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it, man. I think that they did a really good job. Uh, I, I wonder, like, if the Saints would have been uh, – they would have had some of their starters on uh, offense and defense would they have played this type of game. But I'm just excited that we actually saw this. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to know that they can actually run the football, ran the ball 42 times, uh, controlled the top possession, and played uh, some some okay defense. I ain't going to say it was some good defense. It was okay. You know what I'm saying? They got the job done. Yeah. 
Uh, the truth hurt. Uh, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, CJ? How y'all doing? Going all right, man. What, what you got? For me? Yeah, uh, I didn't uh, get a chance to see the game today. I had some stuff to do this morning, but uh, based off of what I was listening to on the radio, uh, I thought uh, you know Drew Brees play. Oh, and you know I was one of his big guy criticizing him uh, so far this season, but I thought he played well. And like you guys been saying, that if the if the uh, offense can just keep sustaining drives, running the football, and you know uh, moving the chains that way, I think it will help the defense out and Drew Brees a lot. That we you know we wouldn't have all that pressure on Drew Brees to rely on him his arm. But uh, they, they, like you say, it, it all bows down to coaching too. Like we just need Sean Payton to just keep, you know, keep the consistency in his offense play calling with what he did today. I think if we can keep that up, and I, I definitely would think that we can still. Uh, I still think we can win a division if we keep this uh, consistency going forward, and we just keep this on a consistent basis. I think that we can actually be NLC South champions again because, honestly, Tampa Bay don't put no fear in me like that. I just think we just need to play New Orleans Saints football, and that includes running the ball, sustaining drives, and moving those chains and, you know, build the defense out a lot. And if that keeps up, even when uh, MT13 comes back and we get all our other guys back healthy, I think we're in good hands. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be – I think that as long as the Saints – uh, continuously, like, run the football and put emphasis on trying to get pressure on the quarterbacks, you know, I think they should be okay, man. I, I think that they have to play complementary football for this this lacking defense. That I mean, that's just the truth, man. I mean, this defense is lacking right now. I think that the fact that they were running the football and controlling the time of possession and some of those drives were long, it made the defense fresh all game. I mean, and not to mention, I mean, Thomas Moore said, I mean, he punted for the first time in the fourth quarter. So, yeah, <laughs> everything that you need to know right there that the, the, the team offense was able to sustain drives. And I think that was very important. But uh, the truth hurts, man. Thank you so much for your, for your commentary, brother. You already know, man. You can call back anytime. I got you. You guys have a good one, man. Right, you too, man. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, man. I mean, that's the recipe for success, man. That's, that's some throwback football they played today. You know, man, we've been saying this for I don't know how long now. How long we've been saying Saints need to run the ball? Man, and you said they ran the ball to the tune of 42. Saints got the kind of offense that they line. You look at their line, they got like two or three Pro Bowls. Right. They got the kind of offense. If they if they choose to run the ball, who going to stop them? I mean, not too many teams in the league got bodies like up front or whatever to, to really stop a run like that in the Saints. A lot of the offensive linemen built to run the football pretty yep. much. Yep. So that, that's what, you know, they need to try to, you know, like you said, you said some 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 nice things. Basically, Sean Payton need to be consistent with his play call. Now, yep. this game he ran 42 times. That's yep. the recipe pretty much. Drew Brees don't need to be throwing the ball 35, 40, 50 times no more. Yep. If they can run the ball around 30 to 40 sometimes plus, I think they're going to win a, a whole lot of games. They'll save injuries. I mean, they eat up clock. They hold the ball longer. Teams won't have the ball as long as they hold have the ball. So, I mean, I think it's all good. Today should be a microcosm of how the whole season should be going. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that they, they should definitely uh, build on this momentum. Uh, this, this recipe right here uh, has shown over the past couple uh, years that they've used it. I've seen it with Teddy Bridgewater that when you mm -hmm. run the football – and you only count on your quarterback to throw the ball when need to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It wasn't like Drew Brees was just throwing the ball all over the place today. He wasn't, you know? Mm -hmm. He was throwing the ball down the field to keep the defense honest. And, uh, you know, it, it opened up lanes for Al Kamara and, and Latavius Murray to eat. Uh, Quinn, uh, what's going on, man? How you doing? What's up? And what's going on, man? What you think about that Saints victory? Man, I've been waiting on it, man. It, 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 feel, it actually feel good this time, you know? Yeah. Like I told you the first time, they was just them getting the rest off, bro. You know what I'm saying? We ain't had no preseason, so we ain't had a chance to get rid of the things and fix the things we need to fix before the uh, real season starts. Mm -hmm. You know, we we in a good spot right now. You know, you got you seen you seen um Sanders do his little thing today, right? I finally stepped up finally. Yeah, you know, he not a waste at this point. 
Right. Patrick came. Patrick came in the clutch. We just got the only thing we got to really fix is our flags, man. We I'm tired of that, man. That's that's the only thing that really be killing us the most is them flags. Right. We can't never get through. And then the ones that the ones that we supposed to get, they don't give us. Yep. You know, so that's the biggest problem is just our flags. Once we get that, once we get that uh situated, man, we're gonna be good, man. We ain't gonna we're gonna be good, man. Don't, like I said, we don't lost two games. That ain't nothing. They can have yeah. them two games. Cause best yeah. of the beginning then the end. Yeah. If you play football, you already know that's the that's something your coach will always tell you. Lose in the beginning than the end. Cause it means more in the end than the beginning. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they, they did a good job. You know, I think that the Saints in the first half did an outstanding job. Uh I think they made the adjustments and they were they were on pace uh to mm-hmm. To drop fifty on these boys, you, you know, know it's that? crazy. That's what, and that's the crazy thing. You can tell they, you can tell once they put they, they, they took the feet off the gas. Like you seen, they, they didn't care no more about trying to go too hard. Because you see how I look at, it, I think they doing based on we got a bye week coming up after the Charger game, right? So mm-hmm. I feel like the way they setting the game up, they set it up different than how everybody else. They trying to start off slow and just getting a rhythm because they know once. That's like with Thomas and all of them. He could have played today, but why would you want to play him? You got a you got a whole body week coming. To you. Let everybody just re- let everybody rest. Let everybody get right. So once it's time to really, once it's time to really get into the game, it's over. Nobody, no excuses. Everybody had their injuries. Everybody had their little breaks they can take. You know, they got roughed up. Then you come back. Then you ain't gonna never lose. Then you good. Right. And you see yeah. doing yeah. him today. Yeah, and and then a lot of people owe. I, I feel like a lot of people owe them apologies because everybody keep talking about Taylor Hill. Taylor Hill haven't been doing nothing since they actually right. had a chance to really do something. So it's like in the end of the day, it's like you should see that as they 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 were just proving everybody wrong. Base. I feel like this is one of them games they're just showing everybody to just shut up and let us do what we do. Basically, yeah. Well, you know they got that old saying. You know, what I'm saying they say, uh, you know, once is a coincidence, or two is a trend. You know, what I'm saying like. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you want to get the, the get the monkey off your back, you got to be consistent, man. So this was a good showing today, but you got a Monday night game. You know what I'm saying? You got an extra day, uh, you know what I'm saying, to make sure that you have, you know what I'm saying, your guys in the lineup. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a good thing. You know, Ram check, you know, hopefully he can pass concussion protocol. Yeah. Uh, you might get Michael Thomas back. I mean, we've seen I- Drew Brees come back a game before the bye week. So, I mean. Right. We don't need him right now. Let him. Let yeah, him. I mean, yeah, I know. I, I know that. I know it. You know it. But I'm saying we didn't need Drew Brees when when Teddy Bridgewater was on a five game winning streak. But he showed up against Arizona right before mm-hmm. the bye week. So I feel like you know you don't need him, but you might end up seeing him in this game. You know what I'm saying? Like so that's just the way the Saints operate. I w- I wouldn't play him. I, I wouldn't. But I, see me, I keep my see him. See, it's, it's a whole different ball game because you know it's up to him too though. So he probably be like, I'm trying to eat, man. I ain't, I'm losing my I'm, I'm I'm losing my rank right now. So he probably be like, I'm just trying to play. Right. But at the end, they still good, though, regardless of what happened. But we gonna if if he even come back, we just gonna they just gonna show everybody what the Saints really gonna do if he do come back against the Charles. You know what I'm saying? That's all they're gonna prove. You know? Yeah, but I mean, I think he, I think he gonna end up coming back. And honestly, as far as his rank is concerned, nobody can replace Michael Thomas, Quinn. But I, 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 I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the call. Uh, just call back anytime, my brother. All right. All right. Take it easy. Yeah, man, I, I, I don't think Michael Thomas had no issue with nobody taking his fight. I mean, <laughs> uh, nobody getting that. Story. Yeah, if anything, he, um, I don't know if you heard this, but I said this might have been a blessing in disguise him being injured because it gave the Saints, yeah. it, it forced the Saints to be able for to for, for Drew Brees and my uh, and um Emmanuel Sanders and Traquan Smith to get like some type of chemistry going. Would they have the same yeah. type of chemistry if Michael Thomas was playing? So. That's something that, yep. I, that I thought about. It kind of, yeah, it kind of forced Drew Brees to get out of that comfort zone, exactly. that security blanket. Mm-hmm. Knowing he got Michael Thomas out there, big number 13, that's probably going to catch nine out of ten of your passes or whatever. And yep. Trey Quan Smith had himself a day to day. I mean, he's he looking better and better every week. Yep. And that might be because of Michael Thomas. The injury to Michael Thomas and a lot of the stuff that's happening to the Saints, I mean, I, I kind of see it all as like a benefit, to be honest. I mean, we we all talked about Drew Brees' home screen is. Seemed like they throwing the ball. We always talked about, and then he to run the ball. He ran the ball 42 times today. Yeah, right. I mean, so a lot of what's happening to him, I mean, you can look at it as being positive. You're giving other players a, a chance to, you know, catch the ball, make some playing time and everything. And about the defense, 
it's like a league wide epidemic right now, and nobody's in the league where they're playing like strong defense. I mean, you look around the yeah, league, that's true. No team really playing strong defense. That's I mean, true. I, I want to say the average game of the winning team is like I want to say like 35 points or something like that. So everybody right. likes scoring points, right. but it's like you have to make that one stop where it counts. If that's what it comes down to, your defense need to try to make that, and you need to get turnovers. So the Saints yeah. need to. I'm thinking. thinking now on the scratch, they need to get at least one or two turnovers a game and run the ball 30 to 40 times to be successful. The Sean Payton record in October and November is, like, real good. They don't lose too many games in the last three or four years in October and November. So. Yeah. yeah, I think that um, – I think as long as they they put emphasis on, on this running game, man, you know what I'm saying? He don't get too stubborn, you know what I'm saying, to a point where he want to go back to doing the same thing he's been doing once these guys start to slowly get back. But I, I, I really, truly believe that Michael Thomas being out helped the Saints out because yeah. it, it made Sean Payton open up his bag. It made Drew Brees mm-hmm. open up his bag. And uh, the defense benefits from it, no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. And the offense benefits from it as well. Uh, Josh, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up, man? Um I, I just got here, so uh, forgive me if um, some of this ground has already been covered. But um, and I only got to see some of the game. But uh, this is kind of what we were talking about earlier. Like when the last time I called him, I said Drew Brees will eventually get it together, mm-hmm. but then he'll start getting tired after like game ten or eleven. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, is so I, I'm hoping we don't see the the Drew Brees that we saw in the first couple of games mm-hmm. at the end of the season because his body is old and tired or whatever, right? Right. Um, but if they do what they did today and just basically run it down everybody's throat, like e- each game, then Drew will have enough left in the tank. And like, yes. Drew can still throw the deep yes. ball as yes. long as he has to do it a few times a game. Yes. You know, and that's point. exactly what Brady did his last year in the Patriots. It was all dink and dunk running all that, but he threw it down the field three to three or four times a game. And every time it was a surprise because you didn't expect him to do it. And Drew can do that, man. Drew still has it. it if, if all he has to do is throw it on field three or four times a game, he can do it and be accurate yep. and just depend on the run. And then um, the only thing is, is that if we depend completely on the run, our defense is going to close in on us like they've been doing because all we do is throw slants. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they can basically muffle our run because I don't think Latavius is good enough to carry the team by himself. I mean, he's not Barry Sanders. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Um, and he's not Derrick Henry. But, I mean, if – uh. If they get Ty Montgomery more involved and stuff, and they get, uh, you know, I, you know, do the three back thing like San Francisco was doing last year, and just depend right. on your run with the occasional right. pass, and we've got our ticket to the Super Bowl. Right. Um, you know, uh, another thing I wanted to cover as far as like the cornerback play. Now you can say that um, the corners played well because it was the Lions or whatever, right? But the mm-hmm. thing is, is that. Um, those corners used to play like crap, even against bad teams. So, yeah, <laughs> obviously, yeah. obviously yeah. they showed some improvement. And you could say the same thing with Traquan Smith. You could say Traquan was eaten off a of bad Lions defense, but Traquan used to perform bad even against bad defenses. So he's obviously improving. So right. if Traquan keeps this up, and we depend on the run, and our defense tightens up, we we've got our ticket to the Super Bowl. That's my opinion of the matter. Yeah, I mean, all great points, Josh. I mean, I, I ain't about to get a disagreement from from me with that. Uh, I think that they keep that that same energy. And, and we talk about uh, arm fatigue for Drew Brees because they've been throwing the ball all over the place. But if you help him out by running the football and, and having those three running back sets and have Drew Brees throw like on, you know, third down, second down, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like mix it up just a tad bit, but don't have him yeah. throwing the ball all over the place. That, that's a recipe for success, man. Like you ain't got to go out here scoring 40 points, 50 points. I mean, they ran like they put emphasis on the run game today, Josh. And and if Ramchek would have went out, I, I guarantee you they would have dropped fifty on. They would have dropped fifty on. Like that's the only reason why because Ramchek is so important. And when he went out, the the young rookie that came in, I mean, he just not Ryan Ramchek, man. I mean, he was way over his head. And the guy that was guarding uh, that uh, Ramchek was guarding, and I mean, he was getting pressure on Drew Brees when Ramchek was in the game. So imagine what he's doing with a guy who's nowhere near. <laughs> the talent level of, of Ryan Ramchick. So I think that that definitely helped the Detroit Lions come back into this game because if he would have stayed in, <laughs> there was no chance. Like, this game wouldn't have been close, man. Wouldn't have been Well, close. I mean, and we do need Ramchick for the Super Bowl. I mean, we're not getting there without him. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it doesn't matter how good Kamara is or Drew is or anything. Like, Ramchick is basically. I mean, nobody says this, but he's basically what the team is built around right right at this particular moment in time when you really think about it. Yep. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's all I had for you. But Drew can still, like he did today, he can do this once every three or four games where he throws all over the field. Right. Um, you know what I mean? And then just depend on the run, you know, three games out of every four. And that's that that that's our ticket right there. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely our ticket, man. And um, I just hope that they can actually – Build on this momentum, man. Look at this tape and be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We definitely going to apply this going forward. But, Josh, thank you very much for calling yeah. in, and thank you for your $2 donation. I've seen that as well, my brother. Call back anytime, man. All right, I'll call back in a couple minutes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you All said right, anytime. Care. All right, See you later, care. buddy. <laughs> hey, Josh, man, my guy. Uh, yeah, E, uh, they put a lot of emphasis on the running game. And we also seen Drew Brees throw the ball down the field consistently, man. We seen him actually push the ball down the field and get a lot of guys involved, man. So what do you think about Drew Brees in this game? I didn't really hear you talk about that. Uh, what do you think about him pushing that ball down the field and um, showing the world, man, I still can throw the ball past 15 yards? I mean, you could pretty much tell that him and Emmanuel Sanders got together after some of these mm-hmm. practices. Might have came in early in the morning or whatever to right. look at some film. And run some routes. I mean, you could tell. Because where they was in game one to where they are now, I mean, I want to say Sanders had eight or nine catches right. today. So it sure looked like they're on the same page. And I'm glad they're on the same page going into, you know, after this week four. Because, remember, we, we really needed Emmanuel Sanders to step up. We needed Trey Corn Smith to step up. Right. So now we have two other legitimate targets, or three, if you add Kamara, other than Michael Thomas. You need that because when you play good team, they're going to take your best player away. Everybody going to double team Michael Thomas. They might try to double team Kamara. Right. So you need trusted targets that you need to go to. Right. And it seemed like Trey Quan Smith, it seemed like he's finally got his legs on him. I want to say he got like three touchdowns or something like that. Yeah, he had two. He had two touchdowns. No, I'm talking about for the season. So oh, he yeah, got like yeah. three or something like that. Yeah, so – I mean, he, he seemed to be getting more and more reliable. I mean, you already know him, man. He was saying his record is. You already know his. Right. So, uh, I think Drew Brees, he, he was Drew Brees today. I mean, no, you're not going to see 40, 50-yard passes, but he got the ball down field. I mean, he got yeah. the people. Um, Lions pressure wasn't like the Tampa Bay pressure, but yeah. at the same time, he got the ball where it was supposed to be. He wasn't checking down Charlie this week. Oh, no, he definitely wasn't. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He got like, the he ball down, Charlie, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he, would, he would die Phil down it, uh, down it today. <laughs> down Phil down it, you know what I'm saying? He went check down Charlie. Yeah, but uh, look, man, I think Drew Brees drew a really good pass. Man, that pass he threw to Alvin Kamara was like – it was amazing. Yes. Like, man, Perfect. I mean, the – <laughs> the corner of the corner was like right there, and all mm-hmm. Elvin Kamara did was like at the last minute put his hands up, came right mm-hmm. in. Like I mean, look, Drew Brees. I mean, there was a difference in his game, man. I was joking around at halftime. I said it's like Marty Scheinheimer when he was looking at uh, the Cleveland Browns back in the eighties. He was like, "There's a gleam." <laughs> he was like, "Go get the gleam." You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's just what uh, Drew Brees had in his eyes, man. He had that mm-hmm. gleam in his eyes. I mean, he heard us talking, man. He know what people saying about him. He heard about the air yards, man. He heard about him being checked down, Charlie. He heard all the talk. You know what I'm saying? So he went out there and he turned back the clock. You know, so like I said, but I, I really just feel like they just need to start throwing the football still, man. I mean, running the football, excuse me, and, and throwing the football when they have to. But the, the fact that he was throwing the ball down the field, I mean, it just opened up endless possibilities for the running game. Because yep. you got to respect Drew Brees' ability to get the ball down the field, you know what yep. I'm saying, to people. If if he's getting the ball down the field to people, you know what I'm saying, then, you know, you got to look at the fact that, okay, we got to change some things up, and it's going to open up those lanes. And that's the reason why the Saints were so successful running the football today. Yep. Uh, is it me, or does it seem like there has been more injuries yep. uh, league-wide this year than any yes. other year in NFL history? Yep. Yeah, that's because of the lack of uh, off-season activities, man. Yep. Those came basically off their couch <laughs> and went to training yep. camp. Pretty um, much. Yeah, so. No preseason. Really no OTA. That was short. Yep. So, I mean, you, you don't get a workout. You usually get about a month of workout with your team. 
You ain't getting much to do work, working out. You no know, physicals done and all that other kind of stuff. You get months to get your body in shape. They ain't have months. It was like they had about a month, maybe a yeah. few weeks, and then they right. started a year. So that's yeah. why you have all these injuries. It ain't just happening here. It's happening in college, too. Right. I mean, you got college dudes. I mean, they getting hurt, but NFL dudes, I man, they dropping like flies. Yeah, so it's going to be a bad world of attrition or whatever. That's what it's yeah. going to be with Corona yeah. and with these injuries. But yeah. whoever got the healthiest team will look like they're going to win a Super Bowl or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's true, E. And um, I think a lot of people don't really understand, like, in the offseason, man, these guys are going out here to masseuse. Uh, they're, they're going out here, man, they're getting into these these ice baths. You know what I'm saying? They're getting mm-hmm. into that little chamber and stuff like that. Where, you know what I'm saying? That freezes down to, like, negative 36 degrees. Mm-hmm. They're doing all these different things. You know what I'm saying? But you can't call your masseuse up during COVID-19 when everybody was mm-hmm. on quarantine. Like, you can't go to, to the place where you can go up in here and get into the chamber and get in the ice tub and use – some of the, the facilities that the team offers you, you know what I'm saying, throughout the throughout the all season. So these guys were just coming off the couch. I mean, maybe your wife would give you a, a you know what I'm saying, a, a foot rub or a back rub or something. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? She might go up in there and go get the witch hazel, but that, that, ain't, good <laughs> that ain't good enough. You know what I'm saying? Yo, that boy <laughs> see the witch hazel. Oh, for real, man. Bringing out the reinforcements. Huh? The, 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 the flex the... off, the flex off 454, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't. Because then they. <laughs> right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? I say hi. They might, they might do that. You know what I'm saying? But that's just not the same thing as a person that went to school for these things to make sure that they yeah. actually have you in game shape. So it, it's tough for these guys to go out here and perform at their high level like that, man, straight off the couch. So yeah, I, yeah, it's, it's definitely not you, Johnny. That, that is a fact. Mm. Uh, the truth hurt says I'm manning up to the criticism I was doing on our quarterback, Drew Brees. Look, Drew Brees is a good quarterback, man. He's a great quarterback. But I look, I stand by my comments about him. I said he regressed, which he has. You know what I'm saying? Like he has yep. regressed. He's not the same quarterback he was when he when he was in his, his late twenties or early thirties. It's just facts. I'm not taking that back. He had a good game today. He was throwing a ball down the field. But I'm not gonna take back what I said about Drew Brees because it's true. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, I think people get things misconstrued when you start talking about Drew. When you say words like decline, it makes it seem like you're saying like he sucks and he no longer can play the position. He's just mm. he's not the same quarterback. I stand by my statement. He had a great game today. You know what I'm saying? Which, I mean, Drew Brees is still a good quarterback. I, I, mm. I, I, I said this on countless occasions. Drew Brees put the Saints in the best position to win. It's, it's a fact. You know what I'm saying? It yep. is a fact. It definitely ain't Taysom Hill. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, Taysom Hill has regressed this season. He has. He's regressed. You know? I mean, he had that good run towards the end of the game, but besides that, very little was done. So, Armstead, more, more important. Ryan, really hard to throw extra blockers on the weak side. Yeah, Armstead came back into the game, though. He got hurt, but he came back. But Ramchick, yeah. he had that concussion. He did not come back. Derek says the game ball goes to Patrick Robinson, Traquan Smith, AK-41, Ryan Ramchick, and Dave Angamata. If I had to pick one of those guys, I would have to go – I would go with Traquan Smith. I would go with Traquan Smith. Patrick Robinson had that good interception in the back of the end zone. That was good stuff. No, no doubt about it. The way that he, he – you know what I'm saying? The way that he turned around, you know what I'm saying? He was able to get the ball over Hawkinson. That was a good, that was a good interception. But Traquan Smith, the catches that he made meant a lot. Because most of the catches that he made was was game saving the, the game saver on third down. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To seal the deal for the to help to seal the deal for the Saints. And a couple of those passes that he caught, man, over some man catches that he caught out there. So I would have to give it to Traquan Smith, man, because you know, Traquan Smith is a guy that we criticize on so many occasions, man. Like Traquan Smith has been low hanging fruit, so to speak. I mean, everybody's been talking about this guy talking about he ain't got it, talking about he washed, need to go in a different direction. And it seems to me now that he's lined up on the outside, it seems like he's he's getting more confidence. And he has more confidence in his ability. And, it, and it's good to watch. He, it really is, man. Traquan Smith, uh, look, we, we've been criticizing this man for a long time. I'm not going to look past that and not get his man his credit when he does some good things. E, what you think about Traquan Smith and his performance today? I think, you know, his performance is real good. He probably should get the game ball. Yep. Here's the thing, though. We're going to take some catches away from Errol Kamara. But the last three years, you had 81 catches. I think that's right. too many probably for a running back, especially right. when we have capable wide receivers. 
And I'm thinking if we're going to take those away from Kamara, we got to give them to him or Emmanuel Sanders because you just know Michael Thomas. Come on, now he ain't going to catch 149 more passes. Right. I mean, he's crazy to believe that at this yep. point he might not. Well, I think he's still going to maybe catch 100. But I think Trey Quan Smith, for him to be successful, I think he need to get 50 of those catches, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what pace he at now, maybe around 10 or 12. Right. But I think he need at least 50 catches or whatever this season. Uh, I, I, I always like his speed and his length. Uh, he's like 6'2", something like that. I could be right. wrong. Yeah, well, it seems like he got, some, he got some long arms. I mean, he got yeah. some good speed. Yeah. And it seemed like he kept both of those end zone passes. He caught them with his, uh, with his hand. Yeah. So that's always a good sign. So basically, if you're six foot two and you're a wide receiver, I mean, that means pre- pretty much you're taller than a lot of the cornerbacks that you're going to be going against. Right. So you can have a height advantage. So you can catch a lot of high balls or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I think going forward, we're going to really need him getting out of October, going into like November or whatever, especially yeah. with the kind of schedule that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, if anybody else fall off, uh, he going to have to be that person or whatever. You can look yep. to Emmanuel Sanders because he's a veteran, but mm-hmm. uh, he, he's stepping up at the right time. When Michael Thomas going out, he's stepping up. This is when he's supposed to be stepping up. So I, I commend him for all his hard work they've been doing. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. Traquan Smith definitely turned the corner. He my MVP of the day. No doubt about that. Uh, we are 500 now, man. What's going on? <laughs> Good, man. Good, man. You, you said earlier, we escaped this one. Yeah, yeah man, we escaped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had to do a lot better on the past defense. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of that's a nasty stuff or what about the PSG time? Right. <laughs> I mean, um, I think we should honestly switch to like a run, run first, pass, second, second team because they just, they just remember, AKA, AKA, damn, damn. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, man. Hey, uh, it's it's hard for us to hear you, man. I can't really hear you that well. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, what can I say? Uh, what else? What can I say? Uh, the Trey Quan, he, he he finally showed up. I mean, and he he actually stepping in, stepping up while um, he gets Mike out. So yeah, so that's all you can say. And what else? What else are you gonna say? Uh, yeah, also these injuries, man. Serious. Yeah. Yeah, these injuries, man, I mean, it just happens. Like like we were just discussing, me and EJ, it's just the fact that these guys don't have that, that off-season routine that they have, um, making sure that their body is in shape. I mean, you have to understand, from March to about May or uh, even early June, you know, we were inside. We Yeah, we were inside. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't go outside. You couldn't go, you know what I'm saying? Like Planet Fitness, you know what I'm saying, around this area just opened maybe like two months ago. You know what I'm saying? So you have – a lot of these things that and routines and and, and, and nutritionists and, and and masseuse and all these people that these guys go see consistently can come to their house. You know what I'm saying? Like I was looking at uh, on Instagram, like Alva Kamara got his own personal chef. Lady, lady come to his house and cook for him. You know what I'm saying? Like he can't have that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? To keep his body right. They get women to be coming up in there. You know what I'm saying? Guys coming up in there, giving them massages and stuff like that. They, they can't do that. They can't do it. So, it's hard, you know what I'm saying? It's hard for you to try to maintain your body when you've been stationary all this all this time, man. So it's no surprise that these injuries happen, man. No, no doubt about that. But uh, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the call, man. Thanks for your comments. Okay, Take it easy. That? Who that? Yeah, he, I mean, it's, it's really no surprise. Uh, we, we talked about it. It's no surprise that these guys – you know, I've been dealing mm-hmm. with injuries, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'd be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if I see some more. I think they're gonna have some more coming up. No doubt about that. Uh, yep. Trey, Traquan Smith been yep. answering the bell uh, so far this season. Yeah, uh, Traquan Smith. We we talked about that. Uh, Kimo, uh, definitely an MVP in my book today. Uh, Brianca says, uh, look like Breeze and Sanders found a click, uh, which is nice. Yeah, I mean, they, they were on the same page. E, 
Uh, you you say you thought that they probably stayed at the practice, uh, put the extra work in. It showed. And, you know, e, I'm going to tell you one play that it really showed to me. It was a play when Drew Brees was under the rest. Drew Brees pump faked the ball. You know what I'm saying? The, the defender jumped. And you seen Emmanuel Sanders run back, break off his route, and run back to Drew Brees to try to catch the ball for about uh, about seven yards. That that's the kind of stuff right there that you you yep. get with chemistry. You know what I'm saying? For you know what I'm saying, you work work together. You know what I'm saying? Those 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 active those after practice reps. That that's the kind of stuff that 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 shows us that you've been working together. Uh, Brees' uh, yep. quarterback rating in the first three games was 106. If that's him playing bad, we in good shape. Yeah, but what what did it get us? Jump to? I mean, you can have some good stats, but what did it get you? Dak, Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott just threw for five hundred yards and they lost. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we we got to put things into context here. You know what I'm saying? Like Drew Brees has always been efficient. That's not the problem. It's about it's about being aggressive. That that's been the issue. You know, I don't have a problem with him with, with the with the QBR like QBR like okay, that's cool, but you're not winning, and that, that's the issue. And not, and then you got to ask the question why? That's never been on trial. The QBR, the efficiency, the accuracy, the, 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 the completion percentage, that stuff never been on trial. It's about it's about winning. It's about is that stuff correlating to winning? Is it? If it's not correlating to winning, then it's for nothing. I mean, like I said, Dak drew for 500 yards today, E. 500, and they lost to the Browns. Yeah. Uh, those looked, Browns. Uh, yeah. Those Browns look good. Yeah, they look <laughs> I ain't real. even going to lie. They look uh, real. They run the ball. I yeah. mean, he had a bad injury today with uh, Nick Chubb hurting his knee. Hopefully, he all right. Right. But those Browns, I mean, <laughs> whatever, they was, whatever happened that first game, they snapped out of that, and they looked good. They went yeah. down to Dallas. It hung damn near half a century on the Cowboys. Today. Right, right, and and not to mention he like okay, like Nick Chubb, like, he's a good running back. He he really is. But you got Kareem Hunt as his backup. Like let's not mm-hmm. pretend like Kareem Hunt is chopped liver. Let's not act like Kareem yep. Hunt don't play for the Chiefs no more because he wasn't good enough. No, he lied to the mm-hmm. organization about something that he did. Before that, he was one of the best running backs in football. So if, yep. if if your best running back goes down and <laughs> Kareem Hunt is your backup, uh, you're in some good shape. You're in very yep. good shape. Uh, when you play a strong running game, you beat up your players. I think Sean is afraid that will happen if they really play uh, the hard – uh, the hard and continuous man bump all that i don't care <laughs> look i'm not look if my running game if my running game is pop, is on point e look i don't care nothing about no injuries bro i don't you know what i'm saying like if that's you think the 49ers care about their offensive line getting hurt running all all that time mm-hmm. you think you think rex ryan back in the day when he was coaching the jets at the beginning when he was running the football about 40 times a game you think he cared about injuries man knock it off man the Saints running the football is the best thing for this particular for this team right now. The Saints are a running yep. football team, in my opinion. They run the ball yep. better than they pass it. Yep. I mean, don't believe I me. Agree. Go look at the stats. Go look at the stats. The Saints have changed and transformed into a running team. And all the people that don't seem to realize that is Sean Payton and some of y'all and some of the fans that want Drew Brees to throw the ball 40 times a game. So I don't mind that. With Tom Brady. You know, like, I, don't I don't mind know. that. We got two good running backs. Like I said, we, we got a run, a, a, a run blocking offensive line, for goodness sake. Ram right. Chase, he went to Wisconsin. Right. If you know anything about college football, that's all they do at Wisconsin. Right. We got P.D. with the stamp. Right. Yeah, we got Olmstead. They ran the ball, too. Cesar Ruiz. Hell, they ran the ball at Michigan. Shoot, we run the hell out of the ball. I don't care. Right. Hey, we can run the ball 50, 60 times. If we win. Who got a problem with that? Breeze right. can throw the ball eight times. We can run at sixty. If we win a game by one right. point, who gonna care? I know right. I ain't gonna care. Man, Shoot, I don't care. Y'all see, y'all y'all know what the advertisement been. Y'all y'all know what it is. You know what I'm saying? I've been I've been stressing this. I've been putting them on t-shirts. I've been saying this every every day all this off season for them to run the football. And we see what happens when the Saints indeed run the football. Oh, we're gonna mm-hmm. read a few more, and then we are gonna get up out of here. E. Uh, Jordan says PJ Williams didn't look uh, bad because they were playing the Lions. Uh, nah, I, I beg to differ, Jordan. He didn't look bad because they were playing cover two, okay? Because <laughs> he had a safety over the top. 
That's the reason why he didn't look bad. Because he knew for a fact if he get burnt, he had a safety back there to protect him. He had an eraser. He had DJ Swearinger behind him. Or he had PJ Williams behind him. Or he had Malcolm Jenkins behind him. That's the reason why. They played a lot of cover two today, which uh, they're probably going to continue to play uh, in, a, in, a, in the future. You know? And I and and, and t- this is, isn't me, E, but I noticed that when they were playing cover two today, it seemed like they were always around the football. It always looked like mm-hmm. they were supposed to get an interception or something like that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know, a couple of times where, like, that play that uh, Malcolm Jenkins, uh, you know, got – he should have caught an interception on that. Yeah. Right? I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we got the kind of defense to play man-to-man. With no, Lattimore, no. with Jenkins – I don't you know. think they have a lot of confidence in the deep ball and them yeah. playing defense against people who throw the deep ball. They never right. turn around. So, I, nah, we, we we don't have the kind of – if you look at it, a lot of teams don't have the kind of people to play man-to-man unless you Jalen Ramsey or somebody like that. And a lot of them don't have a lot of those. Right. So, we need to play cover twos and some zones. Patrick Robinson, he good with zones too. So, you know, maybe that's something we need to think about playing down, down the – down the line too, but you need to stay away from that man to man stuff. We get in trouble. Right. We get pass interference calls when we play that man to man stuff. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. We definitely get in trouble with that, man. So maybe they need to change that up. Uh, love the savage running by Latavius Murray. Yeah, Latavius Murray was balling out today, man. Running a ball with reckless abandons, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, I, look, I like Latavius Murray. I always have, and I always felt like. If people was criticizing Latavius Murray, it was because they really didn't give him opportunities for him to show his skills and his ability. This season, it looks like the Saints are giving him opportunities, and he's answering the bell. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I like the way he runs the ball. He's a big guy with like 6'2 or 6'3, about 230. I mean, he got good speed. When he hit that hole, he hit it hard. He squared his shoulder. And you run you over if you if you, if you got the wrong kind of stance or whatever. Right. So I mean, we need somebody like him in the third or fourth quarter to come in and uh, you know shorten that game for people. Or whatever. I right. think he's a good runner. I really do think we need to start using Washington also. Or whatever. Right. Take some of those carries with Kamara and uh, Murray's uh, out of the game. I think they need to start utilizing him. I mean, it all goes back to that running game. I mean, when things get tough with the running game. Peyton don't need to just go away from it because, you know, if you stop the Saints maybe on two or three different running plays, you know you're going to start throwing the ball about eight, ten straight times or something like right. that. Exactly. So we could, if he could be more patient with the running game or whatever, maybe start even setting up some play action off of the run, I think that will benefit us too. People like uh, Adam Tresman and, you know, Trey Corn Smith down the middle. Right. So and I think that's something we need to start doing also. Yeah, I, I, man, me too, man. You know, I think that um, I think that they need to start utilizing. I, I think they need to utilize every uh, every guy, everybody they got. I like mm-hmm. the first pass that Drew Brees threw today was to Marquez Calloway. I liked it. You know what I'm saying? There was a guy mm-hmm. out there, and and I feel like it helps the guy's confidence too. It, it's like, early, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, if, if Drew Brees goes to you early, it's like, okay, man, he trusts me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're just in a game and you ain't getting no targets, like that's discouraging. But if you yeah. go out there, you you get this guy the ball early, you like, okay, dang. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I can get the ball today. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, especially for a young guy like Callaway. You know what I'm saying? He get his first pass at 16 yards. His mama probably watching. You know what I'm saying? Traveling at home. Right. Ah! You know what I'm saying? Going crazy and stuff like that. Everybody giving you high fives and stuff like that. Like, oh, mm-hmm. man, my cousin and my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it builds their confidence. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm definitely excited about that. Uh, right now, E, I want to say congratulations to uh, Chester Flowers. He is the winner that will receive the custom-made State of the Saints podcast mask, courtesy of maskmarket.com. Uh, Chester, thank you very much, man. Thank you for uh, snapshotting that picture. Uh, make sure that you inbox me, man, with your information. Once again, Chester Flowers, man. Congratulations to you for winning that mask. Uh, no doubt about it. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, congratulations to you. Uh, e, uh, before we get out of here, I'll give you a final thought, man. What you think about this Saints game? And um, uh, what can you see from – what do you look forward to seeing going forward with the New Orleans Saints? I mean, going forward, we need to take this recipe, write it down, uh, laminate a copy, and use it for <laughs> next week. <laughs> That's what we need to do. Shoot, for real. Everything that we did this week, 
make some tweaks on defense or whatever, sticking that co- uh, cover too, right. trying not to leave our cornerbacks on the island. I mean, we don't know if uh, Lattimore and Jenkins going to be back next week. I mean, hopefully they do. We're going against a uh, a rookie quarterback next week or whatever. I mean, you've been looking good in all of the games that you've been playing. And yep. So, I mean, we got to get some pressure in this rookie quarterback. I mean, we got to decide, disguise up some schemes. But as far as, like, what we did on offense, we need to take that recipe and use it next week or whatever. What are we playing at anyway? We are playing in the Dome or we playing in our low zone? Playing in the dome, playing the dome this time. Okay, so they should have more people in the dome, more than that. Uh, friends and family thing, hopefully. So hopefully we can get. Uh, I've been seeing these other stadiums; they've been having like maybe ten, twenty thousand people in the stadium or whatever. So hopefully we get some more people in the stadium. But as far as like what we did today, we need to bag that up and do that next week. See if we can get this guy into some turnovers and run this ball. Right. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. Deontay Bell, thank you for the 299, says need to get Harris involved. He always open on 22 angles. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's yeah. – I mean, man, that little dude was tough. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I play, man, like, he was, like, breaking tackles. And, you know what I'm saying, like, he's running through these guys. And, they, and I've seen uh, one of the linebackers wrap them up like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's about to try to run through the linebacker. This mm-hmm. guy, man, that's yeah. – that little yep. dude, and then, like he almost returned the punt today. He almost he got one, yep. he almost free, almost broke free. But man, that dude mm. is tough. But my, my final, my final thought on the game he is uh, to pick it back on some of the things that you said. I think that they do need to bottle this, but I'm very concerned about the health of Ryan Ramchick because when you got uh, elite pass rushers like Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram mm-hmm. coming in, yep. you know what I'm saying yep. on the left and right side. You know, and, and you don't have Ryan Ramchick. Like, the Lions front is is nothing like the Los Angeles front. And they nope. can't get pressed to breeze. And mm-hmm. even the youngster today, he did a good job filling in for uh, Ryan Ramchick, uh, Greenridge. You know what I'm saying? He did a pretty good job. Man, those guys are going to eat this dude for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay? He's going to get coached up this week. I got to tell you that way. He's going to be at the – he can be at the Austin's facility real early next week and have right. Cam and Hendrickson going against them all week, trying to, right. you know, coach them up. Then we're going to need them. Yep. Yeah, you're definitely going to need them, man. So if Ryan Ramchek can't get the green light, we definitely going to need him to step up. Uh, also, man, I, I like the fact that they're running the football. I would like to see that uh, going forward. Uh, you're going up against Justin Herbert, but that doesn't mean anything. He, like this, this, this kid has, it. like he has it, man. Like they yep. lost the day of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but they were up in that game, and he yep. played really. Well. I seen a 75 yard touchdown that he threw down the field. You know what I'm saying? So yep. he does a lot of great things for the Chargers team. And if you're a Chargers fan, I know you got to be excited about your future because mm-hmm. this kid has it. And I yep. think that New Orleans Saints got to be ready to play this guy. You know what I'm saying? You can't be out here taking this for granted. And you can't beat on your chest because you style this critic for one week. You need yep. to take this and be consistent with it. That is the biggest issue that we have as fans. We know that this team is capable of doing what they did today. They just don't show it enough. And we need that from the New Orleans Saints team. So if they can run the ball, control the time of possession, and I'm hearing that the NFL has reached out to America Trail, uh, you know what I'm saying, also the Saints organization has reached out to it to try to get the Superdome 25% at capacity for this game on Monday Night Football. So hopefully uh, she'll allow this to happen since our, isn't the city uh, in phase three right now, E, if I'm not mistaken. In phase three, and she running the city like with an iron fist. I mean, you got the uh, in the club, in the uh, uh, bars or whatever. She got the uh, to go cups. I mean, she she don't want this outbreak to spread anything further, and we go back down to two or one. So uh, I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna go. She be she been running and sitting out here with an iron fist for real. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I understand that you want to keep people safe. And sometimes, you know what I'm saying, it's hard for people to see things when they're so motivated and they want things to happen their way. But hopefully they can be able to get that. I mean, I'm seeing in other states and stuff like that. I mean, even in Florida, I mean, people at Jacksonville Jaguar game. Yep. So, that, I mean, hopefully they'll be able to do that so the crowd can make enough noise to become, mm. become a 
distraction uh, to a young Justin Herbert and also for the defense, you know what I'm saying, to be playing inspired. And uh, hopefully they can replicate some of the things that we've seen. And, uh, you know, they can – I mean, but – I think that they'll be able to get the job done, man. Alvin Kamara continuously playing out his mind. Front yep. runner for all the of the year, in my opinion. Uh, Drew Brees, as long as he can keep the defense guessing, getting the ball down the field, and as long as his chemistry with Emmanuel Sanders continues to grow, we already know what Michael Thomas is going to do. We see Traquan Smith starting to step up. So I think the Saints will be able to, uh, you know, get back on winning track uh, really soon. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do down the stretch. I mean, yeah, we shout got out to Cam Jordan in the first second of the year, too. Oh, yeah, man. Shout out to Cam Jordan. Definitely, uh, you know what I'm saying, get, getting getting off the snide, you know what I'm saying, you know, getting that first sack of the season, you know. So hopefully, you know, this is this will be the first of uh, many more this season. And uh, the Saints, they got to keep winning right now, man. The Carolina Panthers are two and two. They're yep. two and two. Uh, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are three and one. So, and uh, <laughs> down in the basement, <laughs> and they're at zero and three, and they got a game tomorrow. So, there's no rest for the weary right here. There's no time to mm-hmm. pat yourself on the back. You got to continuously win. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, in my opinion, should have lost the date. They found the yeah, way to sure. win. Mm-hmm. Good, things, good things do. They find ways to win. So the Saints got to continue to uh, got to continue to win and keep pace with the guys in the NFC South. Uh, they're going to be looking up on the, from the outside looking in, no doubt about that. I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. And, Mike, thank you very much. I wasn't sure about this. He said, Malcolm Ingram is hurt. You're absolutely right. I wasn't sure when I said that. I, I wasn't sure when I said that. I thought – I know it's him and also the safety for the team. I think he on IR. I, I wasn't sure though. I wasn't sure. Though. I just thought I'd throw it out there. I knew somebody would correct me. Ingram, Ingram on IR. IR. Yeah, I kind of figured that, man. But I, I knew that. I knew yeah. the safety. IR. I know he's done for the season. Okay. Uh, 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 Jerwin James. Jerwin James. Oh yeah, he, he yeah, he been, yeah, he been on. Yeah. I, I was, something like that. I wasn't. I, I thought maybe he was hurt, but I wasn't sure. And I knew if I if I said it, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. But thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. And thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com. Search the State of the Saints podcast. Also, Facebook.com. Search the State of the Saints podcast. Previous episodes are available. iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio.com, and Anchor FM. So if you can't look at the videos, you can always hear them by checking out one of those streaming apps. Till next time, all I got to say is, who that?